Hello and welcome to a new video of Squash Originals. Today I'm here with Arno. Arno, say hi to everybody. Hello. <laughs> We're gonna work on the return of serve, uh, both sides. I've done this one previous in a Dutch version, but I've been getting a few questions about doing one in the English version. Here we are. Arno, you're gonna serve the best way you can at me in all types of ways. And from there, I'm gonna take you through my steps of returning the serve, what things are important. Let's get into it. Not too shabby for a first one. Okay, so Arno has had, hit a few different types of serves. The first thing I do is my position. I take this corner of the service box as a marker and I'm like a little bit open with my right foot, making sure I can see Arno, the one who's serving, and already calculate the moment he hits the ball to the front wall with the speed he uses and the height he uses uh, where the ball will end up. And with that information, I'm gonna move. Is he hitting it to my forehand? I can open up. If he's hitting it to my backhand but it's deeper, I can step back with my left foot. Um, for me, important here, the most important thing and the most errors I see occur is people getting too close to the ball. So use this width of the service box line as a guideline stepping back with your left foot. So what I do a lot is I take my left foot here to maybe have a small step in, getting behind the ball, yeah? So first, the stance in the corner of the service box. I keep my racket here for, in case Arno hits a one through the middle and I need to hit a forehand. The moment I see it's gonna be a backhand, my racket will prepare early to get the, my racket behind the ball, yeah? So that's one I enjoy as well, uh, the cross-court lob, still hitting it out of reach for Arno, um, making sure the ball goes to the back and I take over the tee position. To um, sum things up, step by step, first observing your opponent, so getting a good feeling of what kind of angle your opponent is giving you. I see a lot of players just watching the front wall, they're missing the angle. Yeah. So make sure you watch your angle as well. Then calculate whether the ball will go here, the ball will go here, or the ball will go here. Because when the ball is short, the service is short, and it will go in here, I most likely either hit the volley here, or I just step back, creating space, and Arno needs to move out of the way, because I'm still allowed to hit a cross court. Uh, so it gives me a straight angle and sort of a free drive for him to work uh, really hard. So this would be ideal if somebody serves at me here, because then most likely I take this space and hit a drive down the line, making my op opponent work hard. This one is difficult. This is the most common one. For that one, I just take one step back, small step in, and try to volley it here. The one in the back, um, most of the time I go here directly or I volley it before it goes in. When I see it has a lot of speed, it will probably bounce out. I just take my space, same thing has to happen. You need to move a little bit and I have a straight drive opportunity. Yeah. Second thing is preparation. So making sure you get your racket behind early. And what I use is using a straight line back. I don't uh, put my racket at my shoulder here. This is, for me, creating too much angle hitting the side wall or front wall, side wall too early. So what I do is I put it more here than here. Yeah, so getting the racket back. Then third thing, 
using the width of the service box in case you need to go back using that step using your left foot getting the racket back and then stepping in small so what I see a lot of players do with the surf for example that gets in here is stepping in too much getting too close and hitting the side ball too quickly yeah so making sure you're stepping with the ball getting behind the ball and then uh, hit your shot um, fourth thing is using height on the front wall getting your marker in the back of the court so using the height and speed getting the ball behind the box if you over hit it once or twice it's okay your goal is taking over the tee position yeah um, the types of service return I use is either straight cross court high same height or maybe once in a while when it's loose going for the nick or a, a quick drop shot just to catch my opponent off guard yeah yeah there's one thing I notice here which I haven't mentioned but it's a technical thing what I do when I return a serve especially on the backhand side is I really cock my wrist so I make sure the angle of my racket surface is facing the front wall my normal stand of the wrist would be like this and it has a slight angle towards the side wall but because I really want to have this straight I do this a lot to get that angle uh, to the front wall yeah see it works okay another subtlety I haven't mentioned but it's very important with this return of serve is putting your weight into the shot so with uh, preparing your racket early and moving back on your shot so when you uh, start your shot really put your chest into your shot I think it's important to put your weight into your shot to make your arm work less to have a more control in your shot so exaggerate moving into your shot with your chest to get more control yeah Yeah, so I think the same rules apply for this side is one, observing, two, uh, getting my racket behind the ball as quickly as possible and not in this angle, I still make this straight angle. Uh, three, moving with the ball if it's, uh, if it's necessary and I'm not taking it early. Uh, and four again, using the height and the speed on the front wall, getting my marker in the back of the court. Yeah. This is for me the most common one where I see things go wrong. Is when the ball is getting in the side wall somewhere here. What I see with players, a lot of the time is that they move towards the ball instead of moving with the ball, creating space. So once you go after the ball, you close yourself up and you have less options. Most likely only a bow or something. So moving with the ball here, is super important so you're still able to hit that drive yeah moving with the ball here getting underneath and still trying to dig it out using height on the front wall good one and i don't know if you see but i'm getting really really low to dig that ball out of the back corner so not just moving with the ball but also getting really low to dig it out and of course you have the opportunity to maybe hit a boast eh? oh that's oh yeah this is also a good one so I made a mistake here one my return was quite low although it did get the depth I think it was deep enough but what I see a lot of players do is when they volley this shot they think 
they have the advantage of going uh, in front. But that's actually not true, I think. I think when you hit this volley, you need your opponent to go through. You have to give him way. And this is where sometimes a collision uh, happens. Eh? So making sure after you hit this volley, you're, you have to give your opponent way here before stepping in for that volley. The only time I, I do this, and I think I'm allowed, is when I hit it a lot higher. So I think this is more the line of my opponent now instead of getting in front of me. Yeah? But if you hit it harder or lower, you're better off uh, going around. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Arno, uh, great thanks for you for helping me out here. Hopefully you learned something as well today. Um, if not, uh, you can re-watch the video and maybe you can learn even more. Um, if you like the videos, please like, subscribe, uh, leave your comments down below. I try to uh, respond to every single one of them. Um, yeah, thanks and uh, I'll see you on the next one.